Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Warner Brothers The Iron Giant. So this film is considered to be very underrated, and I can definitely see why. The setting is in America in 1957, so this was a very serious time for the United States with the threat of nuclear war at all times with Russia and the threat of communism spreading, and worse than that, perhaps, was the fear that was spread about it, which led to several false accusations and judgments on innocent people. And that is all done pretty well in this movie. Now, obviously, they don't go into all the serious and complex issues, this being a family film. But there is definitely semblances of that there with the serious plot of Sputnik and how similarly to Sputnik, the giant is being treated like a threat because they aren't sure of where he came from, which in the words of the villain is enough reason to blow him to kingdom come. Yeah, there is definitely a, a resemblance to the actual issues that were going on here. And that's part of what makes this film so great. That it takes a lot of actual history and puts it in there. And then we have the whole mystery surrounding the giant. They never spell out exactly where from space he comes from but that doesn't really matter because it's not really important because the point is of how because he wasn't from here that's why he was judged so harshly but it definitely adds a sense of mystery and something that doesn't necessarily have to be revealed specifically other than just space the stars and then there's the friendship he has with Hogarth and the bonding scenes, which are really heartwarming. A good movie always has a lot of heart, in my opinion, to it. It doesn't have to be the main focus, but it definitely is a plus. And here their friendship is really sweet. And some of the best scenes in the movie just have them talking about life or Hogarth explaining something to the giant. And there's themes of life, death, violence, souls, all of which are handled quite nicely. And the 50s theme really is done well here. They go with the paranoias of the time as well as having certain references to things from the time, like Bert the Turtle, the infamous duck and cover animation is parodied in Hogarth School, as well as B-movies at the time with terrible acting, and kids wearing late night snacks, reading comic books. This is such a 50s story and it really works for the time frame but at no time does it ever feel like dated because since this was made 40 years after the movie actually takes place they needed to be careful with what they did to avoid confusing kids which is a good thing usually when you're set in the past you get a better sense of what you're doing as far as that goes than when you're set in contemporary times and are trying to stay relevant. Here, the classic feel is really nostalgic, and I'm sure if you had to pick a movie for somebody that was nostalgic for the 50s, this would be the best one, at least for animated, that is. So we have a nice mature storyline with important themes that are all handled nicely. Even the theme of soul, they don't specifically 
go into the Christian idea of the soul, even though there are some Christian prayers at the dinner table and references to Satan and God. But when Hogarth is mentioning it to the giant, there's no real specific religion mentioned. So that's a nice route to go down, in my opinion. As well as a great bond and a nice connection to a decade that makes you really feel like you're part of it. The story for this film is great. Definitely one of the best for animated films in general. The animation is also really nice to look at. It isn't Disney level for the beautiful realism and settings, but this isn't a Disney movie at all, in spite of how some people, I'm sure, mistook it for one because it's a hand-drawn animated film that is an anime. This is a movie that's very much grounded in reality, minus, of course, the giant. So, it would be going for a different feel, but at the same time, it does have a certain cartoonish style at times, which really fits because it's a Warner Brothers movie, and there are comedic moments, but at the same time, it knows when to be serious, too. Moments in the diner are zippy and fun, especially when the squirrel gets loose, but then... When it gets serious, then the movement slow, does slow down. And, of course, any scene related in space or the giant flying is really great to look at. So, animation is another great plus for this movie. No real problems here. Now, finally, on to the characters. Hogarth is a great kid character. The problem with kid characters is that they go one of two routes. Spoiled brat or little angel. There is a real line in between them that's a well-behaved but good-natured kid. And Hogarth really is that line. He does break rules like all kids would when they can get away with it. Like sneaking out to watch scary movies and staying up when his mom isn't around. Eating junk food. Sneaking out at night to be with the giant. But at the same time, he has a definite sense of kindness and compassion towards the giant. And he's quick to befriend people when they give him a chance like Dean and later he does wind up making friends with kids around the very end of the movie and he does all he can to help the giant really feel like a part of things but at the same time he, he does un, he does have some problems too not being understood and being seen as the smart kid and being picked on. So there are definite problems there that a lot of kids go through. So he makes for a nice dynamic character. Then there's the giant who he's so innocent and even though he doesn't say much He's so expressive, and Vin Diesel did a great job of playing him, which I'm sure was a great inspiration for his ever-famous character that is very similar, Groot. And you feel for him all the time with his sinful, childlike way of speaking and thinking, and the end... Even when you know how it's going to turn out, still get you a little here. Then there's Dean, who is a beatnik character, but he also has a nice guy side and is a father figure to Hogarth, or older brother at first, and gets more responsible and protective as the movie goes on. And he is a little apprehensive to the giant at first, but then he warms up to him as well. And then 
he becomes really a real ally to them both. So he is never a great character, and he goes with a nice don't judge book by its cover message that also works for the giant. Then there's Annie, who is a great mom character. She's protective, nurturing. She can be firm when she needs to be, but she also does try to let Hogar be a kid, have some weird beds even if they aren't the best ones so she is never great mom character and then there's the villain Kent Mansley Ooh, he is a creep I like anime villains a lot but this one makes me uncomfortable I mean I know what his real motivation is but every time he's on screen I think of other things, and I know I shouldn't because I'm reading into a family book, but it's so creepy the way he calls Hogar all these pet names, well, nicknames like Sport, Buckaroo, and the scene when he drugs them, and then he's in his pajamas in bed. Ooh. But I know that's that he's supposed to be creepy and sleazy, and he's a liar, a coward, and ugh. A very unpleasant villain that really crosses some lines, but that's what he should have been, really. So I can't fault the character for that, really. He isn't a Disney villain. He's somebody you just straight up hate throughout the whole movie. And he's done well there. So, The Iron Giant is a well-animated movie with a strong storyline and some great characters. And really deserves more recognition than it gets. Definitely worth a check out. So, in the comments, tell me what great anime films do you think deserve more recognition than they get. And as always, if you have an anime film you want me to review, please tell me about it in the comment section below. Until then, see you later.